coming up on a special edition of This Week in Iowa. We take you on an exclusive tour of a medical cannabis facility in Colorado. The growth, the operation, and how it's dispensed. Now it's legal in Iowa. We'll show you what will be different here at home. Hi everyone and welcome to a special edition of This Week in Iowa. I'm Amanda Krenz. And I'm Sabrina Ahmed. We are here at the beautiful Iowa State Capitol and today we're going to take you on a tour of a Colorado growing and dispensing facility for cannabis. I'll show you what you might typically think of when you think of one of these places. And we're also going to show you something that's totally different and that is actually what's coming to Iowa. Over the next 30 minutes we're going to be discussing medical marijuana laws both at the state and federal level. Some problems with them as well but one once you meet Colton Turner, you might understand why states are legalizing it anyway. Before cannabis, I was basically uh, in my deathbed writing my own will. Colton Turner's story is one of the thousands of stories people who work in Colorado's cannabis industry have heard. These people are having to tr move from state to state, take their children or take themselves from state to state, become refugees in essence in order to receive this medication. I have uh, Crohn's disease, rheumatoid arthritis, and lupus. A teen whose family moved from Illinois to Colorado as a last resort. Diagnosed at 12 years old, Colton had tried just about every medication possible. Gave me moon face. Uh, my face was completely round, completely swollen, and that was just one of the side effects. His lupus and rheumatoid arthritis are actually side effects of one of his meds. Confined to a wheelchair, his parents knew it was time to completely change their thinking. And we found a study in uh, Israel that said, Nine out of 11 Crohn's patients that smoked cannabis achieved remission, and the other two gained complete symptom relief. The only place to get it, Colorado. I have to put him in a car where he is, you know, he's so fragile, he's in a wheelchair, we don't know if he's gonna make it, um, and ship him off 14 hours away or 13 hours away. The transformation was almost immediate and miraculous. The first time I saw him out of his wheelchair, he had walked up the hill and he was standing there while I pulled up and <laughs> ooh, it was hard. It was awesome. It was awesome. From a disease that has no cure, Colton was symptom free and the tests prove it. Complete clinical remission. Crohn's disease is one of the many eligible ailments on the list in Iowa, along with Parkinson's disease, cancer, multiple sclerosis, seizures, AIDS or HIV. ALS, as well as most terminal illnesses that involve a life expectancy of less than one year and untreatable pain. Colton gets his medicine from places like Medicine Man. This is a multi-million dollar dispensary, one of the three Medicine Man locations in Denver. 131 and 55 cents. Matt Benton works here. He's not a scientist, not a doctor, but he recommends the products patients take home. People come in with chronic arthritis or hip pain, back pain, a lot of patients like that, and then cancer patients. They have a 40,000 square foot growing facility. So one tray is one plant's worth of bud. Sally Vanderveer owns the company with her family. When I heard about medical marijuana before we got into the business, I thought it was uh, people's excuse uh, as to how they could use marijuana legally. And then um, I very quickly learned how wrong I was. All the plant flower they sell is grown in their own facilities. You won't see any of this in Iowa. Instead, you'll see stuff coming out of a lab, like this. Super critical CO2 coming into these extractor vessels where uh, ground up plant material has been preloaded. Med Farm Colorado is very different than Medicine Man. We can then take these different components, calculate a therapeutic dose that we want, and then combine them to the exact numbers. This is what's coming to Iowa. They'll still have growing rooms where the environments are controlled, but once the plant is dried, cannabinoids are extracted using a similar process to how decaf coffee is made. It'll then be purified using ethanol and taken into a lab for testing. It's just giving us more information to make better product and more specific therapeutic forms. Then it'll be made into things like patches, oils, suppositories. The facility in Iowa will look the exact same as Medfarm Colorado. The product will be different because of Iowa law that limits the amount of THC. 
To give you an idea of what that means, Colton takes a cannabis oil pill that has a one-to-one -one THC to CBD ratio. That ratio of THC to CBD really determines what's going to happen with that particular strain. There are more than 100 active ingredients in the plant, known as cannabinoids, and those are the two most well-known. CBD has some benefits like pain relief, curbing nausea, and helping reduce inflammation. THC, which is the psychoactive component and can make a person feel high, has different benefits like relaxation, appetite stimulation, and pain relief. When you combine the two together, the benefits change and increase. It's called the entourage effect. In Iowa, not all combinations will be possible. If a patient needs 100 milligrams of THC right now, they're going to be limited on how to get that 100 milligrams. Medfarm Colorado's director of formulation development says it can also get really expensive. If I could make four 30 milligram capsules, it's going to be a lot less expensive than 12 10 milligram capsules. Iowa lawmakers say the limit on THC is because human research doesn't exist. But we've kind of got the cart before the horse here. Dr. Richard Deming is a cancer doctor in Des Moines. He says the anecdotal evidence might be strong for medical marijuana, but when you're dealing with a cancer patient and making big claims, research needs to back it up. I'm very open-minded, um, and I also will help advocate for federal law that allows the true clinical trials that will prove the, the benefits and the side effects. Colton and his family are advocating for medical cannabis across the country for similar reasons. The side effects are hunger and sleep. And with, when you have a kid that has Crohn's disease, you want them to eat and you want them to sleep. I've seen him high on morphine and I've seen him high on Oxycontin and Dilaudid. And that is so much worse than the high that cannabis would ever give him. Up next, meet a Colorado lawmaker, the effects cannabis has had on his state, and a word of advice for Iowa. You're watching a special edition of This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed and Amanda Krenz. This is Medicine in the Making. Welcome back everyone. As we take a look at how the medical marijuana industry operates in Colorado and begin to examine what it would look like here in Iowa, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the effects that the medical marijuana industry has had in Colorado. So we'd like to introduce you to Dan Pabone. He's a state legislator who was actually against legalizing it recreationally in that state, but once it did pass, he wanted to make sure it was regulated. Take a listen. I think our system is probably one of the most robust, safe ways to regulate cannabis in the world. State Representative Dan Pabone has spent thousands of hours helping Colorado catch up to an industry that boomed before it could be regulated. Introduced three bills, one uh, that basically dealt with the public safety and health uh, parts of the of cannabis, another with the regulatory, and then the third with the taxation. There's now a robust tracking system, one that Sally Vanderveer has to follow. An RFID tag from the metric system, which is the state mandated seed to sale tracking program. This is an industry that has changed a lot since those first three bills became law. But you can see how big these ones are. And as Medfarm Colorado starts to take shape, Pabone says it's these types of companies that are the future. The more med farms we have in the world, the better off we will be. But before Medfarm Iowa even opens, he has some advice for our state. Understand how big the black market is right now. Understand how many youth are using cannabis today in Iowa. He says Colorado didn't really have that. And unless you know what your baseline is, you can't really measure the increase in a fundamental way. 25% off card in there for you. Except for tax revenue. That's something they can track very easily. And the passage of recreational marijuana increased the state's budget greatly. $200 million in revenue into our state budget. Um, we've been able to fund uh, very hard to fund programs like substance abuse and prevention programs opioid uh, prevention programs or, or abuse programs. We've seen a decrease in opioid use and studies have come out saying that that's tied to the fact that people are using 
uh, cannabis in place of opioid use. Pabone realizes there is a missing component in all of this, and that is science-based research. The science and the research is still catching up to the anecdotal uh, stories. And I think once those two connect, I think we'll see a, a sea change, not only in how we understand the product as a general matter, but see medicinal benefits that will affect generations of Americans to come. And for those who are against using the drug, he says this is something that might interest them too. We're not advocating that you start using this or, or try it even, um, but there's a lot of reasons why it should still be regulated and, and, uh, and taken out of the black market. Coming up next, who is making sure the implementation of Iowa's law goes smoothly? Meet a medical advisor next. You're watching a special edition of This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed and Amanda Krenz. This is Medicine in the Making. Welcome back everyone to a special edition of This Week in Iowa here at the Iowa State Capitol. Legalizing cannabis has been years in the making here in Iowa, but some lawmakers are saying that this is just the beginning. Including two Iowa senators, both a Republican and a Democrat, who want to see the legislation expanded. But they're running into some roadblocks. We want to accomplish two things. One, to be able to raise the THC level, mm -hmm. and two, be able to expand the conditions. Last year, Senator Zahn and I uh, worked together to pass a bipartisan bill in the Iowa Senate that include 21 conditions and access to the entire... You're watching a special edition of This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed and Amanda Krenz. This is Medicine in the Making. As our state implements a law to grow and dispense medical cannabis in our state, the Medical Cannabidiol Board is here to help. So that's a group of medical professionals that advises the legislature about changes that may need to be made to the law. So what sorts of changes are they advising right now? Take a listen to what Dr. Shrek, an oncologist, has to say. Do you think that, it sh that the legislature should put these should have put these restrictions on the medicine. You know, I'm not in the legislature and I'm a creature of, of, of the legislature. They not only licensed me to practice medicine, but they also you know, enabled this board to come into effect. But I've watched these folks um, uh, work on this for quite a few years. I've been involved in other issues down with the legislation. I could see the proponents for medical marijuana. I didn't think they'd ever get it done, quite frankly. I was very pessimistic and skeptical, but they did. And like many pieces of legislation, it's a compromise. They had to work out something that everybody could live with, at least initially, and I think they did a very good job. Moving forward, as a member of the Cannabidiol Board, what will you be recommend, recommending, or what would you like to see recommended for change in law with the legislature? Well, first of all, we have a lot to learn on the board. Uh, we have seven specialties represented, and each person representing each of the specialties will need to learn in depth and in detail what the medical literature says about their specialty and the use of cannabis, what the medical literature says about uh, safety, what the medical literature says about effectiveness, and disappointingly, there's not a lot out there. Members of the legislature who are proponents for moving this legislation forward, some of them have said when I've spoken to them that the current law in Iowa, the way it is, will fail because there will not be enough patients to make it sustainable. It's a matter of economics. What's um, your response to that? I think that's a real risk. And in fact, uh, quite frankly, uh, I think we have to be very careful about that. We're fortunate to have a, a, a partner, the manufacturer, who um, I believe must have very deep pockets. They could probably run at a loss for a year or two. And I think they're very wisely planning on the long term, the, the long term, the, 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 not the short short term. And uh, they're planning on getting involved in research. They're seeing opportunities to, the, as, as laws change and rules change, to make this a very reasonable uh, deal. And uh, so I've got a lot of confidence in them in doing so. But you're right, we could compose a program, and it's been composed in other states, that is so restricted that no, no process, manufacturing process ever steps up to do it. Right. But I, I think that problem will take care of itself over a couple of years. Dad, what do you want Iowans to really understand about what the board is doing? It's a, it's a compassionate act. It's going to give people who think this medicine may help them a chance to try it and see. Now, a lot of them are going to be disappointed. They're going to find out it doesn't accomplish what they want it to accomplish. They're going to find out that it's expensive because really it's going to be a, a cash basis. It's not going to be paid for by insurance. It's going to be out of the pocket, cash expense to buy these products. And that can become an issue as well. But I think the basic products as they're being composed by the manufacturer are safe. I think they're much safer than opioids. They're much safer than alcohol. If the regulations that are in place and are going to be enacted 
for uh, medical marijuana were in place for opioids and alcohol, we would be a whole bit, much different world. Much safer medication may have a wide application. Next, lawmakers in Iowa, of course, have the final say about what happens next. Their thoughts. You're watching a special edition of This Week in Iowa with Sabrina Ahmed and Amanda Krenz. This is Medicine in the Making. Welcome back everyone to a special edition of This Week in Iowa here at the Iowa State Capitol. Legalizing cannabis has been years in the making here in Iowa, but some lawmakers are saying that this is just the beginning. Including two Iowa senators, both a Republican and a Democrat, who want to see the legislation expanded. But they're running into some roadblocks. We want to accomplish two things. One, to be able to raise the THC level, mm -hmm. and two, be able to expand the conditions. Last year, Senator Zahn and I uh, worked together to pass a bipartisan bill in the Iowa Senate that include 21 conditions and access to the entire cannabis plant. Uh, and we did that in a broad bipartisan way. The bill went over to the Iowa House and House Republicans uh, did their work and essentially have created a, a, the new law, the law we're currently under, that's really unworkable. With the legislation that is currently being enacted, I mean, you can still get 100 milligrams of THC and two teaspoons of oil. So how much more does one really need than that? Currently, uh, Iowa is the only state that purports to have a comprehensive program. What I mean by that, it has more than epilepsy as a condition. And in every other state, the 29 states that have comprehensive programs, patients have access to the entire cannabis plant. What that means is they have access to a few hundred different compounds that work together to provide therapeutic benefit, including CBD and THC. And, in, and until we give access to patients and the manufacturers that are going to make these medicines, the entire plant, you just won't have a therapeutic dose for things like Crohn's disease or chronic pain or um, a whole host of other conditions. Some of the conditions are, that are currently in the bill, the medicine that will be sold in December of this year essentially won't provide any therapeutic benefit. Well, and to be fair, I mean, we, we've worked on this for many years. You know, four or five years ago, I can't remember what it was, I was the only Republican that voted for it. Uh, what was really awesome is because of education, we are at least moving the right direction. What do you think is the likelihood of something passing in the Senate and then getting on to the House and also passing in the House to either increase the number of debilitating diseases or to increase the amount of THC or to make it so that the whole plant is available to a patient. And I would just say we're gonna, it's, it really hasn't been a problem in the Senate. Um, we've just had some challenges in the House. I feel still positive, although I have not had a conversation uh, with the Majority Leader Dix in regards to getting this on schedule uh, for floor debate. Uh, but then again, we need to make sure that the constituents of Iowa are contacting some of their representatives uh, and, and educating them about the benefits. Okay, and if it doesn't happen this year? Well, I, I, all the players are the same uh, that were on the field last year, this year, and I'm not optimistic that Speaker Upmeyer, uh, who has not been especially supportive of this, uh, is going to see a bill go forward. There's a lot. Of, there's been a lot of opposition in the Republican caucus in the House, and all the same people are still there. So I think it's an uphill battle to fix this programming in a meaningful way. Uh, to make it work, not only for the patients, but we have a manufacturer who's decided to come to Iowa, and the way the program is currently structured, they're, they're going to be in the red for a very long time without more patients and more conditions and access to the entire plant. Mm -hmm. And I just, be, to be fair, Speaker Upmeyer has come a long ways for the, uh, in the regards to the process of moving forward with medical cannabis. I have faith that that a lot of the people that we serve with in the House are open-minded to, and we're not happy about what we did last year, so. Now I've spoken to Speaker Upmeyer, and she said that the anecdotal evidence isn't enough, that they need real scientific-based evidence that proves it's effective, otherwise she's not going to budge. And as it being a Schedule One narcotic, that's just not possible. So what is your response to that? Well, the, the scheduling issue is a federal issue and it can be a state issue, but 29 states today currently provide cannabis as medicine to millions of Americans, more than 
more than half the population of the country has access to that without more science and more research. Of course we'd like more, but I think, I think the scheduling issue is really an excuse by the speaker not to aggressively move forward with a, with a modern program that will work for people. And I hate to dis respectfully disagree with you, but the reason why there's not all these studies out there is because of the inactive, uh, the, what the, our federal government has done in regards to uh, the, uh, of the laws that are already in place. You don't have companies out there that are willing to risk that. Uh, but I would say, to answer your question, is uh, tell that to the mother that I know, uh, that their daughter has went to Colorado and has got to the, the cannabis oil, oil uh, and how her daughter has slept through the night for the first time in her life, uh, has completed a sentence for the first time in her life, and the seizures that she had has almost been eliminated. So as you can see there, a majority of the Senate from both sides of the aisle are pretty much on board with this. But we talked to a Republican in the House, he's a former state trooper, and he's not. If it's about medical conditions, I'm 100% for it. But uh, just taking the cap off, and the, the Senate's got a bill here that does it. It, it takes the cap off, mm -hmm. you know. And, and that's wrong. Even if it's for this list of conditions, they want to increase the number of medical conditions as well. They want it from like 10 to 21 or something like that. Um, they want to increase the number of conditions. They want to take the cap off, but it's still medical. They still, they don't want to make it recreational. Yet, they will. Stick with us, we'll be right back. Thank you so much for joining us for our special edition of This Week in Iowa from the Iowa State Capitol. We hope to see you again next Sunday.